What's going on guys, my name is Matt and the monitor I'm featuring in this video, the BenQ EX351R is by far the best monitor I've ever used. It has a 3440 by 1440p curved display, 100Hz refresh rate, AMD FreeSync, HDR support, adaptive brightness, and the list goes on and on. But there is one big caveat, the price. This guy runs for $800 on Amazon, and in today's video we're going to discuss whether or not that price is worth it, and if so, who should be buying this. So let's start with the packaging. This guy comes packed in by far the largest monitor box I've ever seen, and the reason for this is because it comes fully assembled. Usually you have to attach the stand, but with this you can just take it out of the box, plop it on your desk, plug it in, and you're off to the races. Other than the monitor itself, you get a relatively weird selection of cables. You get an HDMI cable, a DisplayPort to Mini DisplayPort cable, and a USB-C cable. This may be confusing, but I'll explain why these are what's included later in the video. So Setting this thing up and sitting in front of it for the first time was awesome. The 35 inch ultra wide 1440p panel with an 1800R curve is really amazing. It's immersive and to me this is the perfect pixel density where things are a great size and detail without the need to use Windows resolution scaling. This is a VA panel which kind of lives in the middle between TN and IPS. It has decent color reproduction with good viewing angles and amazing contrast. In my opinion VA is the way to go for a content consumption monitor. This display has a refresh rate of 100Hz which is great as the difference between 60 and 100Hz is much more significant to me than 100 to 140 and with a FreeSync range of 48 to 100 hertz, this is going to provide a really smooth gaming experience with a compatible high-end AMD GPU. The greater gray response time is 4 milliseconds, which is fine with me, but may not be ideal for the most hardcore gamers. This monitor does have HDR support, but with only 300 nits of brightness and with it being an 8-bit panel, it's not really true HDR. Another interesting feature this monitor has is BenQ's Zero Flicker technology, which eliminates the traditional LED flicker issues to be less straining on your eyes. In terms of design, this monitor has relatively thin top and side bezels with a large bottom bezel. These bezels are pretty typical of other ultrawides I've seen in the past. It's sitting on a height adjustable stand with forward and back tilt. The stand is chrome and silver with a cable pass through which I think looks quite nice. This monitor used to have a VESA adapter you could purchase, but doing some research I found the company that made the adapters are now out of business, but I guess some people are 3D printing adapters so that is an option. Also, the back of the display features a silver and black color scheme. In terms of ports, this monitor has a USB-C which can be used as display in with the two adjacent USB ports as a hub which is perfect for laptop setups. This also features two HDMI inputs along with a full-size DisplayPort input. Next to that is a headphone jack which you may need in a pinch as the display does not have built-in speakers. And finally there's a power input which connects to an external brick. I would have preferred a slightly larger monitor with an internal PSU but I guess it is what it is. One other notable design feature is this nub sticking out of the bottom center of the display. This is an ambient light sensor that allows the display to automatically adjust the brightness and color temperature of the display to the environment the display is in. This can be turned off and on in the on-screen menu, which while I much prefer the joystick control on other monitors, these menu buttons do work okay. And in terms of the menu, this monitor gives you a lot of options for display modes and settings to tune things exactly to your liking. So what is it like actually using the monitor? Well, like any ultrawide, anything with a timeline is awesome, including video editing and music production. This monitor is pretty accurate color-wise, so unless you're the most hardcore of video editors, then this should work for most YouTube video creators. Multitasking is awesome without the need of bezels in between your multiple focuses, and 21x9 video is amazing, but in reality, most of the video on the internet is in 16x9, which is fine, but then worst of all, a lot of people add black bars in their video to simulate 21x9, and because of that, on an ultra wide, you're left with this. Gaming is also incredible, 100Hz at this resolution is hard to run, but if you can do it then it's an amazing experience. I don't have a high-end AMD GPU, so I couldn't test the FreeSync capabilities, but from other users I've heard it works perfectly fine. Finding games that actually support 21x9 isn't always easy, but again you can always just play in 16x9. Overall, this is a great monitor, and like I said in the beginning, this is the best monitor I've ever experienced, but is it worth the $800 price tag? Yes and no. If you're wanting a monitor for most everything, 
gaming, video watching, content creation, and productivity, this monitor might be right for you. But if all you do is game, then there are better options for you. And if all you do is video edit, then there are better options for you. But if you need a monitor that's a jack of all trades, then I can recommend this if you're willing to fork over $800. In conclusion, this monitor is amazing. You're getting an insane amount of features with the only real downsides in my opinion being no G-Sync, no official vase amount support, and the $800 price tag. If you're in the market for a high-end monitor that's a jack of all trades, then I can definitely recommend this. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up as well as consider subscribing. And this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.